Welcome back to my belated annual Oscar series wherein I talk about every Oscar category, rank each nominee according to who I think should have won the Oscar, and then talk about my official prediction for who would win the Oscar. Of course, I'm talking in past tense because I'm covering uh, the Oscar categories from last year. So picking up where I left off, let's talk about best production design. And the nominees are Bridge of Spies, Rene D'Angelo, Bernhard Heinrich, and Adam Stockhausen. The Danish Girl, Michael Standish and Eve Stewart. Mad Max Fury Road, Colin Gibson and Lisa Thompson. The Martian, Celia Bobak and Arthur Max. And The Revenant, Jack Fisk and Hamish Purdy. Now I do think this is a great list of nominees, but there is one clear winner here which we will get to later. So first of all, let's talk about who I think should have won the Oscar. And fifth place is the kind of weird nominee that I think maybe could have not been on this list, and that is The Martian. For me, this is a weird nomination because it sort of reminds me of how Gravity was nominated for production design in 2014. In the sense that there isn't really a whole lot of production design that's like physical and tangible in my opinion. Um, to be fair, the landscape of Mars in The Martian does look great, but mostly because of the cinematography and the visual effects, not necessarily because of the production design. There's really not a whole lot of PD in this movie that stands out to me, except for the bunker that Matt Damon is in for most of the movie, and the interior of the spaceship where Jessica, Ch Jessica Chastain and the rest of the cast are. Um, but don't get me wrong, I still love The Martian as a film, but in this uh, category, it's kind of misplaced. Now at number four, I'm going with Bridge of Spies. I think Bridge of Spies is a highly underrated film. A lot of people like, you know, talking smack about how Spielberg is not in his prime. And while that may be true, that doesn't mean he can't still make great movies. And I think the uh, Bridge of Spies is a great movie. It's still a really technically accomplished film, and of course the production design is still stellar. The recreation of the Cold War era feels really spot on and really accurate. Um, and when you see the Berlin Wall uh, up again, it feels like a documentary, like you're watching it unfold in real life. However, the reason why it's at number four is that the setting and the scenery in Bridge of Spies really don't play a very pivotal role in the film. So we don't get to focus on it that much, it doesn't get to stand out as much as some of these other movies. And to be fair, when we go from country to country in Bridge of Spies, the production design does feel kind of the same. You know, it's mostly interiors of rooms, so it, it does kind of feel the same from place to place. Now at number three, I'm going to put The Danish Girl, and this is a Tom Hooper film, so of course it's going to look great, and the movie does look great. Um, it just barely takes the spot over Bridge of Spies because of how much more focus is placed on the environments, especially Lily's and Gerda's home. You can really kind of tell sort of the life they live, and the society they live in just through the visuals. And again, this is something that production design has been doing in film since time immemorial. You know, they tell a story without having the characters speak. You can really tell a lot about this era and this world just through the visuals. It's visual storytelling, it's really immersive, and The Danish Girl does it great. Now at number two, I am going to put The Revenant. And I know I dissed The Revenant's costume design as just rags and whatnot, and yes, the sets in the film really are little more than wood and mud, but man, they feel 100% authentic. When you're watching The Revenant, you feel cold because you feel like you are there in these crazy landscapes. Um, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna describe The Revenant in a way that I like describing production design and sets. Um, the sets here feel like video game locations. They feel like levels in a video game, and I mean that as like the highest compliment I can give. I mean this in the sense that when you're watching these characters uh, go around these environments and through these sets, uh, everything feels like it's there for a reason. It feels like they're, you know, little patches of land that are strategic in their placement. It really draws you into the mindset of the characters as they're walking around. And the structures they built for the Revenant are incredibly impressive and they carry a lot of history with them as well. You know, the boat that uh, Leo's character uses, uh, the big citadel you eventually see later on is just this rundown, dirty place and you can tell a lot just from its look how these people live. And The Revenant had one hell of a location manager because I don't know where they shot, but the places in The Revenant are amazing. The locations are so beautiful and they lend themselves very well to this story. And finally at number one, really, was there any competition for Mad Max Fury Road? I know I keep giving these awards to Fury Road, but you know, like there really is no competition. I know Fury Road is set in a desert wasteland, but every single 
kind of prop and vehicle you see is just so great. Like, first of all, the Citadel of Immortan Joe is terrifying. At the very beginning, when you're with Max and he's running from the Warboys and you see the, like, the garages where the Warboys work on the cars, you see the places where uh, they store the blood bags. Like, it's all really scary and dirty. Um, but really, the main event in Mad Max Fury Road are the vehicles. And the vehicles and the cars, every single one of them is so, so good. Like, each one has its own unique personality and each one looks like it has its own unique function as well. Again, the vehicles show a history of the world. It shows how these cars were pieced together from different scraps and whatnot, and each of these different scraps really represent the drivers. It's really just such a great achievement, and you could do a whole separate video series just talking about the car designs in Fury Road because they are that creative, they're that inventive. And of course, as to who I thought would win the Oscar, I put my bet on Mad Max Fury Road and it did win. It's just simply impossible to ignore how inventive the vehicles are. Um, you know, and the practical effects in the movie really were widely publicized and they're honestly just a miracle in this in this era of CGI effects. Alright, so those are my thoughts on Best Production Design. What did you guys think about this category and these nominees? Who did you think should have won? Who did you think uh, was going to win? Uh, whatever you guys think, whether you agree with me or not, please leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation.